Peter was hiking in the forest when he stumbled upon something strange. There was a large frozen object in front of him, with what appeared to be something inside of it. Peter got chills running down his spine, there was definitely something off about this. He knew he had to get help. He just made the discovery of his lifetime, but he did not know if that was a good thing. God knows how long this creature had been frozen in ice before Peter found it. He knew that this could be the discovery of a lifetime and could not wait to get it freed from its icy prison. But when Peter finally gets through the frozen wall and sees what it is that he is dealing with, he is stunned by the true magnitude of his find. He had brought people with him from the scientist camp to help him get behind the wall of ice and help him come face to face with what could be his greatest discovery. The crew start starts to carefully chip away at the ice until they finally get close enough to get an idea of what they are dealing with. The workers all take a step back from the shock. Peter just drops to his knees. What? How was this possible? But what did Peter discover in the ice wall? How had he even found this ice cave in the first place and could this possibly be a discovery that the world would be better off without? But before we start smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. With century-old ice melting at an alarming rate over the past couple of decades, more and more secrets that were once hidden beneath it are becoming accessible, potentially revealing incredible things to be discovered. When explorers from all over the world are ready to pounce on these opportunities, trying to forever cement their name in the history books. Most of these explorers fail dramatically in their effort, but Peter, a theater, a 36-year-old scientist, is not most explorers and his most recent mission proved that. His journey will take him to northern Greenland, land that was previously completely inaccessible and thus still very much unexplored. Peter sets out on his journey, trying to find something frozen in time beneath the ice layer which is getting thinner and thinner. When I the first few weeks are tough, with only enough to survive and no comforts from home, Peter is determined to find something to make the trip worth it. He's been hiking for miles now, but less any civilization is at least two days away. But then he stumbles across something that may just be what he's looking for. As the days turn into weeks, Peter gets discouraged. With a final burst of courage and determination, he continues to hike out, searching for anything. A strange shadow, maybe a weird rock, or even a crack in the ice. He continues to look, almost desperate. But on the white ice-covered plain, he spots it. It's a rock formation of some kind, or so it seems. It's something at least. He heads toward it. Once he gets close, he determines that it is a rock formation, but there's something else. There's a breeze coming from small holes between the rocks. That's unusual and it is definitely worth exploring. Could it be a cave? Or a tunnel of some kind? Peter is a seasoned explorer, but he knows the dangers going alone would mean, especially since no one knows exactly where he is or what he's doing. With curiosity getting the best of him, Peter decides to take a short look into the hole. He won't go too far, and he'll certainly be careful. The hole quickly turns into a tunnel. It's narrow and difficult to walk through. He has to be careful with every step he takes. The further down he goes, the wider the tunnel gets. It's dark and cold. Peter doesn't realize just how far down he's gone. As the tunnel gets wider, it suddenly turns into a giant cave. Peter is so excited. He could be the first person to ever see this cave. But he knows he should leave and come back, but needs to be explored. Walking around for hours, there's nothing but ice and rock. It's only then that Peter spots an ice wall that is different from the rest. Eustur staying by Chiva Jaranite and Linamai. Want to current meter and more to brain brain of rage because of the layers of ice around him, they seemed very blue and white. But this ice wall is different. There's some form of dark silhouette behind it. Walking closer to the ice wall, he shines a light on it. There is definitely something here, but what? He shines the light over the dark silhouette, trying to make out anything that could give him a clue as to just what this is. But there's no luck. It's time to go back and get help. He can't make this discovery alone. It's time to be sensible and call it a day. Before leaving, he pulls out a piece of paper and begins to map out the cave as best he can. He wants to be sure he can find this place again. It's only once he has this done that he makes his way back to the entrance of the cave. He was definitely leaving, but only for now. But by the time he gets out and back to the surface, it's dark. He needs to set up his camp soon or he'll freeze. With his plan in mind, he gets ready to sleep. He's going to head back to the nearest village. It's a two-day hike. From there, he's going to recruit a group of people to help him get through the ice wall. The journey back to the village was long and difficult. The cold wind had picked up and snow had started to fill the air. Peter was in serious danger of hypothermia, but he didn't care. He was more concerned with remembering how he could find his way back to the cave. He barely gets any sleep, but come morning Peter is ready to take off at the first rays of sunlight. He had noted his exact location on a digital map he had downloaded, but this was very inaccurate, as the map was way too zoomed out. 
In the town, Peter is quickly able to round up some guys that are willing to help him out for money. He doesn't tell them much about what he thinks that he found and just keeps it at needing some help digging out something from the ice. People in this area are willing to do anything for money. Will twisting the real truth catch up to him? Luckily, the townspeople are not interested in asking a lot of questions and are just interested in making a quick buck. The next day, they attempt to travel back to find the exact location, but this is a lot more difficult than Peter had hoped. But because there has been a snowstorm raging for the past 24 hours at least, a lot of the area has been covered in snow. The entrance was nowhere to be found. Peter got a bit desperate. How could this happen? Since after hours of trying, the townspeople are ready to give up and head back. Peter didn't accept them quitting, he started to get annoyed. But luckily it doesn't get that far as one of the helpers, who is poking in the ground with a stick suddenly feels it shoot through the ground and falls down. Peter's heart skips a beal. Makazidit sends to stew one around and falls down. Pipis pull in weeple to Dishans of Diva Rispero rank of you way down the hole as quickly as they possibly can. When Peter sets foot in the big cave again, it is exactly how he remembers it. He almost sprints to the cave to get to his frozen treasure, finding it again within minutes. There it is, the huge wall with the silhouette inside of it. No one would stop him now from claiming his fame. Let's get to work. Peter had not told them anything about that they were going to have to dig out this. Peter wondered for a second if the townspeople would be willing to help him in his endeavor. It's now the helpers themselves are getting excited. Were they going to be part of something historical here? They are quickly getting to work but try to be as careful as possible. They need this in prime condition if at all possible. If the layer of ice is very thick, and getting through it as carefully as they are doing it takes a hell of a long time. One of the workers hits the ice a little too hard and everybody stops what they are doing. Suddenly rumbles are going through the cave. Peter Hart skipped a beat for a second. What was happening? The helpers all take a couple steps back and some even start running towards the entrance again fearing that the whole cave is about to collapse. And seconds later, the ice wall that they have been digging in for the past hour comes crashing down in a million pieces and what has been hidden behind it for probably centuries is finally revealed. He drops down on his knees. It's, this is not what he expected at all. Behind the ice wall is not a creature but just a stone wall but a stone wall with an enormous and most likely ancient drawing of a human-like creature. Peter was extremely disappointed. It was still a great find, but not what he expected it to be. It was drawn so thick and dark that he was able to see the silhouette through the clear ice. But now that all the ice has broken away, a lot more drawings are revealed on the wall. It proved that humans had been here and maybe experts would be able to determine from when these drawings originated. Peter knows that it is now time to inform the media and his peers. In the next couple of months, a lot of experts visited the ice cave Peter had discovered and the site was quickly declared protected so that people could not enter it without permission. Peter was really proud in hindsight. It did cost him a lot of time, money, and effort. But now he was part of the history books. Peter was credited with the discovery and his name would forever be cemented in the history books. It was and still remains his crowning achievement as a scientist. He might not have gotten rich from the discovery, but he cared more about the credit anyway.